or uh, we cannot process the security as is on uh, as is not negotiable then normally those are the things no those are the letters that you want to pay close attention to because they're giving valuable information they're not denying you they just said you can't take it you can't take it you know for example if it's like non-negotiable that means don't sign it in a in a specific capacity right supposed to freely endorse it so it's not, so it's negotiable so you can negotiate with anyone if you restrict it or if you uh, put in like authorized representative and all that crap then you're making it non-negotiable as it as they can't sell that back to the IMF sure you're sending it back to CRA but CRA can't take them bring them and put it back into the IMF so there's a reason why you have to give it freely uh, free endorsements. Okay. So yeah, attention to what they say. So, and that was, um, so that was uh, with the CRA bill. Um, nothing really happened. Everything was relatively quiet until the summer when I decided to go back to school. Right? And, right. Uh, yeah, and um, that's when I, uh, that's when I uh, went and applied and to the Ontario colleges, and, you know, all that crap. They have to do for Ontario. Now, okay. here's the. This is the funny thing because you'd already null and voided your last, um, the payments that you were supposed to make your last student loan. You were reapplying for yet another one. Yeah. And go ahead, continue with the story because this just baffles me. Yeah, and it's, it's actually quite funny. And uh, I carry you have those documents because I sent them to you, so you yep. can attest to that. And uh, so I went and applied for the uh, student uh, student loan again, you know, got it somewhere in the middle of July, and then I told them uh, to send me uh, to send me a statement, right? And they said, well, you technically you're not in repayment, so we can't send you a statement, but we can just let you know um, what's on it. And I said, well, it doesn't matter as long as you attach some type of security on there. And uh, so, you know, he sent it, of course. And uh, so I got it about a week and a half, two weeks after. Um, it was, uh, they sent it to me on August the 3rd, 2010. And, uh, sorry, to, yeah, 2010. And uh, so as soon as I got that, I took care of it. And I applied the A for V and I sent it off around in the middle of August, right? Right. And, um, <clears throat> and, uh, after I sent it off, you know, uh, didn't hear anything back uh, until uh, the beginning of September. In the beginning of September, I got something uh, around like September the 5th saying that the account was balanced, meaning it was uh, zeroed out, right? Right. So, yeah, uh, well, sorry, so it was like the, it was like the third or something like that. Um, let me check, actually. I got it right here. So, anyways, it was like in the first week of September, and two days after I started school. So I started. Uh, so I got the uh, I got the thing um, for September the third or whatever, and uh, I took care of the student loan, and I received the confirmation that I did. And then I started school a few days ago. So by the time I started school, I already took care of my student loan. That's fantastic. And I mean, anybody who's listening is going to be like, okay, well, how do I do that? And this is the thing. It can't just be spoon-fed to you. You can get so much information, but you got to do a lot of the groundwork yourself. Yes, indeed. So that's, uh, you need to understand why A for V works. So, oh, yes. It was, now, is there a link for A for V or anything that you can send? Because some people are saying, well, we've never heard of this before. Well, because there is a reason. A for V is a private remedy. Not too many people releases it because um, I don't mean to insult anyone, but, you know, if someone fucks it up, then they're going to cause a lot of problems for the other people who are actually doing it right, and it's just going to be more headaches. And so it's better for you to just actually understand and when you understand why A for V works, you can back it up yourself. You don't need to pay someone else or ask other uh, someone else's help to pretty much spoon feed the process throughout the whole entire duration. So yeah, so the I received a statement um, 
it was uh, September the 3rd, 2010, and there was no due date, and I started school on September 7th. So four days after, I was starting school, and I already took care of my student loan. So that was, yeah, and that was for the whole year, not the first semester, no, not just the first semester. So, um, so the entire year paid for, thank you very much, and I'm going to take my education and run with it now. Yeah. So, after, um, so after I uh, was enrolled, you know, I was uh, kind of laying low and stuff like that, and then I got the... Uh, I had shenanigans uh, that happened in uh, London, and this is where the severe beating came in. I went in to it, help someone. It, uh, sorry. Before you, you were going to say something? No, I was just going to prepare everybody for this story because this story kind, kind of disturbed me a, a, quite a bit. Um, uh, so, go ahead. <laughs> Well, maybe you should give them a warning because that—that that was my warning. I was disturbed, so <laughs> you can continue now. Okay, so I went uh, to London uh, to help one of uh, one of my buddies um, do some uh, do a couple of things to try and take care of this uh, driving issue that he had for a while there, and uh, you know. He sent he sent him a notice to the mediator uh, saying if he if he was uh, acting as a judge then you know he would demand the judge's oath and uh, the judge the well the, the media I'll, call, I'll just call him the mediator the mediator guy um, he said that the request was denied and we have proof that he was acting as a judge because um, I don't know if people ever went to settlement meetings but they show a list of who's going to be the mediator. Who are, and who's the party they are, right? So, um, so yeah, so that's uh, that's when we knew that we were dealing with someone who was claiming they were a judge, right? And by law, by the administration uh, administrations act, uh, it states that all judges must have an oath or a bond, and a bond could be interpreted as an oath depending on how much knowledge you have. So. The judge, uh, the judge did not provide his oath. Um, you know, there, there could be a couple of screw ups. There could be a couple of reasons why he didn't. He asked to because it was a, maybe it was a private settlement or a private uh, meeting. You know, maybe that's one of the reasons why. Nevertheless, he didn't do it, and uh, so uh, he he told he told me that he didn't want to hear from me. Um, he told me he didn't want to hear from me, and uh, that's when you know me and uh, me and the, the, my buddy there uh, pretty much got really serious and said, you know, you uh, you still haven't provided the the oath there because we were questioning him because he was uh, trying to give legal advice to the other party, you know, something like uh, you know you like the he he said he said a comment. Um, something about you should know what an order looks like because the order that was issued to uh, seize my friend's car was actually forgery and um, when he requested a, a copy of that uh, order it was actually two different signatures and the first order had a different signature than what the actual office was so it was like like the signature was like John Doe but the actual name under it was like Bob Smith. I don't know the exact names, but you guys get the idea. So we were kind of getting serious, saying, hey, you know, where is your oath? And um, so we, we, got, uh, we got pretty serious, and he kept saying, I don't want to hear from you. You're not, you're not uh, this person who I was speaking to. So I looked at my friend, and I uh, told him, look, you got any ID so I can, call, so I can talk for this account? And uh, he, he, he slowly emerged his uh, World Freeman Society uh, ID and I just looked at him with a nice long stare and I just slowly went left to right and said no <laughs> that was a very bad thing <laughs> and um, so he gave, he gave me his health card right and I pretty much just slammed it on the, on the table and said look here's, Terry Buf or, here's my friend and uh, now you're going to have to talk to me because now I'm holding it. So he, that's when he started threatening me, you know, I'm going to, 
leave, you should leave now or you'll be charged with trespassing, right? And I told them, but you have no authority over here. You haven't provided evidence that you're a judge. So you're impersonating a public official. And that's when he uh, tried to issue or tried to uh, tell the constable to uh, escort me out, right? And I told the constable, I said, you can't, you can't listen to that order. He's not a public official. He's personating. Constable, I want you to arrest that man for impersonating a public official and breach your trust. And so that's when the fucking judge just went ape shit, right? Fucking throwing shit all over the place, throwing his shit all over the place, throwing some uh, random person's shit all over the place. And then he just, he pretty much just um, told the constable to arrest me for trespassing, right? And uh, so that's that's when I turned over to the constable and I told the constable, I was like, look, you can't do that. You can't, uh, you, you don't even know what authority that you can uh, arrest me under as, right? And he told me, you know, it's the, it's the Public Works Act. And I said, that's a, that's a 1930, that's a 1938 legislation that was made in World War II. That's a wartime legislation. You can't enforce that in peacetime. And that's when he, that's that's when the constable got really pissed off because now I'm questioning his authority. And when you question authority, same thing with jurisdiction. When you question jurisdiction, you're gonna piss some people off. Yeah, it's a lot of ego wanking. So yeah, so that's when I realized that the judge was making his escape like a freaking ninja, throwing a smoke bomb down. Um, I turned to him, and then uh, the con the constable took my arm. And you know how pol uh, police officers always try to yank your arm so you would resist? Yeah, that's what happened to me. He pulled me up, and I was like pretty much, I, I was like pretty much jumping in the air because he lifted me up so hard. And I had to just really push it back down because he was going to pop my arm. And then that's when he turns me around and he grabs me with his uh, uh, hand and he choke slams me around the table. He choke slammed me so hard that I, I, had, a, I had a hard time breathing. I had to keep him off me. So after, um, so after uh, you know, that bamboozle started happening there, um, it was like maybe 15 seconds, not even. You see my friend come running in, and he's just like, what the fuck is going on? What did you do? You know? Like that, that kind of expression. And right. uh, Sorry, Brian. No, I just said right. I was just agreeing, and sorry. I'll shush. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's uh, that's when he started yelling, you know, I'm witnessing your assault, I'm witnessing your assault, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, the uh, guy that was on top of me, he was strangling me, he's Gordon Publicover. He's a London peace officer, or that's what he claimed. Excuse me. Um, that's when, uh, you know, he, uh, that's when, like, I was trying to get his arm off of me. And that, that's when he said, you know, I should charge you with uh, assaulting uh, a peace officer. And, you know, with, with a grasp of air, you know, I told him, like, I, uh, what, was, what did I say? I said, uh, you, I, I, I told him, you can try, you know. And uh, so I finally managed to pull off one of his arms, right? And as soon as I pull off the other arm, he fucking comes lunging in with the other arm. So I was right back to strangulation, and at that time I was blacking out and losing my strength, right? So after that, um, he dragged me across the table, and he, th this guy's huge. This guy's 300 pounds, six foot eight or something like that. He's a fucking huge guy. And um, so he was dragging me, and then right on the edge of the table, he picked me up in midair, and then he just choke slammed me right onto the carpet, right? And it's, it's that kind of carpet that's really thin. So when he slams me down, I, I got the wind knocked out, and I couldn't breathe because he was still strangling me. So that's when I got really serious, and that's when I really started the fight. So that's and he called for backup, too. And, well, here, uh, here, I just want to interrupt for a second because this is the point. Now, you're saying well, that you know I finally started to fight. Yes, because that's what we humans do when we're being attacked to the point of being killed. When you're being strangled and the life force is being choked out of you, what do they expect you to do? But anyway, continue. They called for backup. Yeah, well, he called for backup, and then as soon as he got off the little mic thing, he put both of his hands on me. He's still strangling me. I couldn't really defend myself anymore, so I was blacked up. Terry told me that I was, that I was purple. My eyes were bloodshot. 
So I, and that that's when you know that you're on the brink.